Hello you guys, welcome to The Ranting Shop. I am Melissa. Today we're going to be talking about Ready to Love, Season 4, Episode Number 5. Okay, so today, let's see. So, Jason finally lets Alexis know what we all already saw and knew. And that is that he's not attracted to her and he cannot get the mommy mindset out of his brain. He cannot transition her from mommy to possible partner and we all saw this especially in the last episode the body language he looked so uncomfortable he looked like he wanted to run out of his skin it was just difficult to watch so i'm happy that he told alexis this so that he doesn't string her along because we know that she likes him so then aj is feeling kyra and they're feeling each other to be honest and if i'm being honest with myself based on what i'm seeing it seems as if kyra is also feeling aj i really feel like they, he is her number one okay so i feel like they're secretly both each other's number ones but they're exploring others but i definitely feel like they'll come back to each other eventually okay even though she was like um bad talking him in the beginning now she's softening up to him now she wants something with him maybe she always wanted something with him and her bad talking him was a strategy so as to keep him for herself, you know, you know, by turning the other women off, it's like, okay, now I could get him for myself. If that indeed was a strategy, it was a not very good one because women are going to be attracted to him regardless. Even though I personally don't see the attraction, like I'm not attracted to him, but the women are. So we have Stacy speaking with Ron and they end up talking about basically trying to determine who's his number one, right? Um... Stacy tells, I'm sorry, Ron tells Stacy that it is Chrysanthemum. They have more in common. And of course, you know, Stacy doesn't really like to hear that because Stacy's a type of person where I'm pretty sure all her life she's been the most desired because people don't like to admit this, but men are truly attracted to women like her, like very racially ambiguous, Latina looking, you know, almost white looking. Men are attracted to that. So um, I expect her to always have the first pick of guys that she wants however this is a different type of situation and these men i believe have grown to a point where beauty is not and should not be the end all be all and um she's having a difficult time grasping that because all her life she's had these immature boys placing her above others simply based on physical attraction however this show is allowing people to see more than just physical appearance and some of the guys are not really attracted or feeling tracy in the personality aspect okay so that was her first letdown she's not number one he he is vibing more of chrysanthemum then we have amber and chris take one that zen dates and then chris tells Amber that he's not particularly looking for marriage, but more so like a long-term relationship. Amber is saying, well, if we're soulmates, then everything will, you know, follow. Whether it be marriage, children, whatever the case may be. So they somewhat bond on an, an understanding, you know, that they've had thus far. So let's see what happens further on in the show. Now we have Ron. Ron tells Chrysanthemum that Alexis is his number one. So because they heard during like when the women convened, Chrysanthemum heard that Alexis, Alexis saying that she is his number one and he is her number one. So he wanted to con she wanted to confirm with Ron and Ron confirmed that Alexis is indeed his number one because they've been speaking off the show frequently. So they've gotten to know each other more than just being on the show would allow. So it's very important, like if you're getting to know somebody, to take the time to get to know them, not just put it on for the cameras and then turn it off when the cameras are gone. Look at how much progress Ron and Alexis have made. And we've never seen that. It just popped up. But it's because they have been conversing out of the show, off the show. And where he is with Alexis is far, is farer than where he is with Chrysanthemum. So I understand. Of course, Chrysanthemum is not, nobody wants to be number two, but that's, he's being honest. I mean, they're on a hunt for their potential wives, potential mates, partners. You can't just go on pleasing someone. You also have to please yourself and do what's right for yourself. Okay, so Alexis is number one for Chris. Chris is number one for Alexis. Alexis is interested in... She's not number... She's not... I don't think she's... Ron is her number one, but... She is Ron's number one. So, Joelle and Venetia are still going strong, feeling each other. I'm a bit worried about um, Venetia because it seems like she's not really diversifying her portfolio. She's sticking mostly to 
Joel and I know how easy it is to just stick to the person you connect to the most but the nature of this show is for you to spread your wings or else you're gonna be sent home like even though you have one strong connection with somebody if the other guys are feeling like you're just a friend to them you're most likely still gonna be sent home so it's very wise for you to spread your wings and I really want her to do that for her own sake because Joel I'm pretty sure is going to spread his wings because he said something very um I'm not going to say interesting, but noteworthy. He said that um, Venetia was his person for now. So that tells you all you need to know about him and his process. He's going to eventually go and look at other potential matches. And I do hope that Venetia does that too. Um, Tressa and Diedrich go out on a date because I guess Diedrich felt like perhaps he could change that friendship vibe to something more romantic. And as a lot of people say, like, attraction is something you cannot, especially for men, they cannot just, out of the blue, become attracted to you. It has to be something where it's there from the beginning. Because if it's not, it's difficult to build up to. Like, personality is not going to necessarily make them attracted to you per se. It's going to more so be your physical appearance. And if they're not feeling that, it's hard to build up to that. So... He eventually figured out something we already knew would happen. He's just not feeling her. And nothing he does will make that happen. He's just not feeling her, you know. And she took it in stride. She was like, well, that's fine, you know. And she took it well. And I just pray and hope for Tressa, you know, in the love department. But it's not going to work with Diedrich. Okay, then he states... um something very important and he's basically telling her without telling her if a man wants you he will do what he has to do to get you and um what that is basically saying is that i'm not that attracted to you because if i was i would be you know doing what i can to have you um then we have the ball freaking frack miss stacy and miss chrysanthia my said that they were cock blockers and that turned all the men off the men were not feeling that when they were trying to um talk to chrysanthemum stacy's all in their in their backs all in their faces like being chrysanthemum's bodyguard i don't know but the guys were not feeling that and um i stated that you know liz was in charge of the girls for this ball liz was in charge of the girls liz had this very sexy pink gown it, it was showing boob it was a high slit dress it was showing fine and the guys were shocked because they'd never seen Liz in that way and a lot of them the way they used to see Liz now their view of Liz has changed you know David said that to her because he was the first one to go speak to her and he's like he'd never seen that before from her and automatically it seemed like he wanted to possess her not to control her but to possess her at this point because he knew all eyes were on her and he wanted to be the one that had the woman who's who, who had the attention of all these men he said, oh, people already think we're together, so let's act like it. Again, he's showing that bit of possessive side that we have come to realize that he pos that he has. He's a bit possessive, and Stacey took it as a big red flag. A lot of women are taking it as a big red flag, except for Liz. So I hope Liz makes the right decision in the end, because David might not truly be the one for her. I feel like David has issues, and he needs to work on them by himself. I don't know if it was a yes since his divorce, but it's just not enough time to to heal because remember he was crying when he was talking about when his second wife left you're not through dealing with that situation why would you want to come and now bring your trauma into another relationship don't understand and a lot of these men on this show they're really not ready for love they're ready for to meet somebody to sleep with but i don't think they're ready for the long-term commitment anyways tommy brought his wife to the thing and amber spoke to her sorry alexis spoke to her, asked her some advice on some things and i didn't write too much about that Liz, because Jason, his eyes are now open when he saw Liz, so he wanted to get to know her. Um, he's feeling some attraction to her. She's also feeling some attraction to Jason, but lets it be lets it be known that she's also feeling David. So we're gonna see what Liz does, but she is in charge of the girls. <laughs> Alexis and Ron. Alexis is trying to figure out, like you know, where is Ron in terms of everything and. He lets Alexis know that Chrysanthemum is basically mostly surface level right now. Like, we don't know for future dates and stuff, but for now, it's surface level. And um, she stated that she likes to be competitive, but she's not in the business of competing for men. So um, she, I guess, wanted some validation from her on that she is still his number one, and she still is. So Joel stated that Stacey was indeed aggressive because 
a lot of people were saying how Alexis was aggressive towards AJ, especially sexually with the innuendos and everything. And I kept saying that Stacey's the same way. However, because AJ is more attracted to Stacey, he's more likely to accept a lot of the things he does because he's attracted to her. And he wants her to do these things. You know, whereas with Alexis, he's not quite feeling her. I don't care what anybody says. He wasn't quite feeling her. And so her sexual aggressiveness made him uncomfortable. You know, with Alexis, he, he had no qualms about it because he liked her. And people are like, no, Stacey's not aggressive, but they want to call Alexis aggressive. So I'm very happy that Joel confirmed to me and a lot of people that Stacey is indeed aggressive. And he says, um, um, I don't want to say it, but Stacey's a little aggressive. So she is indeed aggressive. But the thing about us in the black community is that we like to tag darker skinned women as aggressive and the lighter skinned ones we want to say everything but aggressive she was aggressive and joel confirmed that as well we need to stop doing that then unfortunately you guys tressa just could not get out of that home girl placement that she got from the very beginning and as a result to no surpri surprise to any of us she got sent home so the people that got sent home this episode was stacy and stacy was very shocked and surprised when ron told her that she was not ready to love and as i stated before it was because she's the type of woman where she has always gotten what she wanted as far as men she's always gotten the attention she's gotten the admiration she's gotten everything the confirmation from men she's gotten that she's always been number one for these men but these are the men that only looked at uh, at her on the surface these are men that didn't care too much about personality and so when you have an attra attractive exterior men are likely to go towards that however what caused her to not make it far and i think it shocked everyone that stacy didn't make it far because i'm pretty sure everybody had made up their minds or had come to the conclusion upon seeing her that she would make it far just based on her physical appearance and men being visual so that was a shock to me that she got sent home. However, the men said it's because of her personality and because she doesn't seem very authentic and open. And David mentions that the first time she he saw her break down after um, he told her that she wasn't ready to love, that's the first time he saw authentic emotion from her. And um, you have to be your authentic self. Like if you're putting up barriers, people are not going to be attracted to that. And um, it's very funny how they made David tell Stacey that she's going home. Karma. No. um anyways um we have tressa went home because poor tressa she just could not get out of that home girl spot that she was placed in so it's sad so who's going home this episode and it's very sad but i hope they find love out of the show i'm pretty sure they will they're beautiful women great personality and i hope they learn and grew from this experience but anyways this is my review for 11 oh for ready to love season 4 episode 5 be sure to tune in for other reviews and rants on the ranting shop bye bye be sure to like and subscribe toodles